Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is an assembly video. I'll be showing you how to assemble the uh, uh, one of our new kits, the LED scroller kit, the tricolor LED scroller kit. It's uh, based on a 555 timer circuit set up to uh, as an A-stable oscillator, which feeds pulses into the CD4017 counter circuit, and they control the LEDs. So if I turn it on you'll see the LEDs start scrolling. If you turn the onboard variable resistor all the way right, they go as slow as it goes. That's as slow as it goes. So if you turn it all the way left, that's as fast as it goes. Now I'll be selling this kit as, uh, as tricolor as well as simple red LEDs. So you'll have the option. Uh, what, what I'll do right now is we'll build one up from scratch. You can follow along with your kit if you decide to make the purchase. What we've got here is a printed circuit board, uh, one microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor, a 0 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitor, a term single terminal block, 10 red LEDs, a 100 K ohm variable resistor, two resistors, one 100 ohm and one 10 K ohm, a CD4017 IC and a 555 timer IC. And everything fits into this board quite nicely. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look, we're going to solder our ICs into place. Now this is very, very, very important. Check this and double check it before you solder. On the left hand side of each IC, there is a notch. You might not be able to see it, but there's a notch. On the footprint on the left hand side, there is a notch. Line them up. Because if you place it backwards, you're going to have one heck of a time desoldering it and placing it the correct way. Make sure that you line the notch with the IC up on with the notch on the footprint of the IC on the board. That goes for both the 555 timer and the 4017. So once you have them lined up, place them in the holes and solder them. Make sure that when you solder that there are no shorts. As I mentioned before, I soldered them in and the notch is on the left hand side for both ICs. So next let's, let's uh, solder in our resistors. We've got three different resistors. One variable resistor or potentiometer and that is placed in the area that's labeled POT POT short for potentiometer. It only fits in one way fits in quite nicely you're not going to have any problems with it. Next you've got a 100 ohm resistor R1 and a 10k ohm resistor R2. The 100 ohm resistor controls the current to the LEDs and the 10k ohm resistor is one of the timing resistors to the 555 timer. So let's solder those into place and then we'll worry about our capacitors. I'd like to take this opportunity to mention earlier I said that this ceramic capacitor was a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. It's actually a 0.01 microfarad capacitor which is in essence a uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor and that's placed in our C1 slot right here. Now since it's ceramic, it doesn't matter which way it goes in. It, there's no polarity. <clears throat> but for our one microfarad capacitor, C2, uh, what you'll notice is it's electrolytic. There's a short lead and a longer lead. The longer lead is your positive lead. The shorter lead is your negative lead. It's very hard to see, but the, the, the lead facing my screwdriver, this end of the board, uh, to the left of it, there's a little plus sign. You can barely, barely see it. But that is your positive indicator. So the positive longer lead goes towards the bottom of the board into this hole and your negative lead is placed into the top hole here so place those in and then solder them and we're actually going to skip the, we're going to skip a step what you're going to do is you're also going to take your terminal block with your screw outlets facing outside and place it into X1 so like this solder that into place we're going to have our capacitors our terminal block and everything soldered except for our LEDs we'll do the LEDs last Lastly, we worry about our 10 LEDs. Now, in this case, this is our red LED kit. We're going to sell the exact same kit uh, in a different listing that has three different colors. Four reds, three uh, greens, and three yellows. Anyway, what you'll notice here is that the standard LED has a long lead and a short lead. Like the electrolytic capacitor, the long lead is your positive and the, neg the smaller lead is your negative. We've also got different names for these. Like any, like any diode, the positive is called the anode. The negative is called the cathode. Now, on the footprint, we've got a standard schematic footprint of a diode. Um, the side of a diode schema uh, schematic with the uh, white line on it 
is the cathode, the negative. And the bottom of the triangle is the anode, positive. So always place your positive lead on the triangle end and your negative lead on the white line end. For instance, what I would do is I would take my I would take my long lead here and place it towards the bottom of the board and my shorter lead and place it close to the top of the board. And do that for all 10 LEDs and then we're going to power it up. It's time to test it. So let's turn on our power. Keep in mind that you've got between anywhere between 3 and 9 volts uh, positive on the left, ground on the right. Let's turn on our power. Right now I've got it at around 8 volts. We'll just test to make sure that everything's working okay. Yep. Scrolling speed goes up when you turn it left and down when you turn the potentiometer right. So there you have it. Keep in mind that we do sell these, uh, again, in two different variations. We have a tons of new kits coming up in January. I'm putting up new videos every day for these kits on how to put them together. Uh, what we'll do is right now we'll do a quick schematic review. It's a very simple schematic and that'll finish the video. My apologies for the semi-skewed view. Right here we have a terminal block. Uh, one side of the terminal block is our positive and one is our negative. Uh, when you see that ground indicator, it means everywhere with that indicator on the board is connected. So here, 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 and here are all connected on the, within the board. And our positive DC line, which is anywhere between 3 and 9 volts, is, is uh, indicated by a VCC. VCCs, all, all the VCCs are connected internally, so here, 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 yeah, and that's it. So here's our 555 timer circuit. These are our timing components, R2, which is 10K, our 100K pot, and our one microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor. They're all connected to our um, 555 timer. This 0.01 microfarad capacitor is just to filter out ambient noise. It's, it's recommended, but it's not exactly necessary for this application. It's usually meant for more high-speed applications, but for good measure, I've included it in the kit. Pin 3 of the 555 timer is connected to the, uh, which is the output of the 555 timer, which is outputting a square wave, is connected to the input clock pin of the CD4017. So, every time that uh, a pulse hits that clock pin, when it one LED will shut off and the next one will turn on. So pulse after pulse, this will turn off, this will turn on, this will turn off, this will turn on, and so on and so on. But since only one LED is ever on at a time, we only need one current limiting resistor. It's a 100 uh, ohm current limiting resistor between the LED and ground. So uh, it works perfect. It works great. Uh, we have all of the negatives, the anodes, interconnected and tied in series with that 100 ohm resistor and ground. Uh, so it's a very, very, very simple circuit. We've got the uh, reset line tied low. We don't have to worry about uh, we don't have to worry about anything. We, it's all set up for you. But all you need to know is basically that in the block diagram, you can change the speed, the output uh, square wave signal. You can up the frequency or down the frequency using your variable resistor. And every single time a pulse hits the input clock, clock pin of the CD4017, a new LED will turn on and the previous will turn off. Very simple. You can create this yourself. Very inexpensive to make. Radio Shack can sell you these parts. However, Radio Shack and the Source by Circuit City so it will sell you 555 timers for like 4 or $5, which really irritates me. But anyway, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you're interested in buying the kit, it can be found at engineeringshot.com or at our eBay store, which can be found through electronicglessons.com. Take care, everyone. Happy New Year.